Hey, this is Niladri. This time we came up with the tutorial for capacity planning within Jira software. So let's see how we can do a capacity planning within Jira. Before that, let's talk about the recap where we talked about how what exactly the capacity planning is and to know what are the different factors that we take care of within capacity planning. So let's begin with the recap. So assume we have 10 days of sprint starting on 7th of June and ending on 20th of June. Every day we are doing our daily stand up and everything but before uh, starting of the sprint we are doing a sprint planning. Assuming we have a 7 members of team, 4 of them are developer, these are Alex, Amit, Tanushri, Dennis and 3 testers, Jason, Jessica, Mark and we have our allocation let's say 100% and mark have 50% of allocation so default working hours is 8 days and mark have default working hours every day for uh, 4 hours sorry so this is uh, 8 hours for everyone and 4 hours for mark and for the entire sprint if it is 10 days then we are having 80 hours for everyone for the sprint and mark have 40 hours because he is 50 percent allocated and if we look into this allocation distributing within the calendar so june 7 it's 52 and every day we are having 52 hours because uh, every day for the team it is 52 hours and total for the sprint including everyone's capacity it is 520 hours now we'll be talk about the default distribution this is how it is distributed Assuming in this screen, we are assuming let's as uh, 12th of June is a holiday. That's a company holiday or a team holiday. Everyone will not be working. So we'll calculate that factor in the capacity. Now, second, we'll be talking about the another factor, individual holiday. So assuming Alex is on holiday on 6th of 8, Amit is on holiday for um, 13th. So instead of saying it holiday, let's talk it about vacation or planned vacation. Jason is also have a planned vacation over here that is uh, 15th. Now this is a whole day off. If someone wants to take a half day off, uh, we are assuming okay, Tanushri here is taking a half day off on 16th of June and working four hours instead of eight hours. So total sprint uh, wise the capacity so far uh, is this after calculating the factors that we have talked so far. Now we'll be talking about uh, the ceremonies that we are actually spending time into within the sprint. So within the sprint duration, let's assume uh, we are doing daily scrum call, even it is uh, 15 hours per book, but we are taking it five minutes buffer and calculating 20 hours every day will be, sorry, 20 minutes every day we'll be doing uh, scrum call. We'll be spending an hour uh, on fifth, on 10th and 12th and 17th for the backlog grooming. We'll be doing a sprint planning on day one, for example, it's depend if you are doing on the first day, you will be calculated this way. If you are doing it on the last day, you will be calculating over here. So at any given of a given day when you are uh, doing the sprint planning, you plan it that way. Then we'll be doing a sprint review or demonstration for two hours or whatever the time you takes and the retrospective on uh, the last day also that will be in close to hours. So total of we can see close to 12.33 hours of uh, time we are spending on all these ceremonies. So you can calculate based upon all the meetings your team is spending time on and calculate it based on that. Now, if we calculate this 12.33, the ceremony time, we see our capacity is coming to 51.67. And then we'll be talking about uh, the focus factor. So this is what we talked about, the vacations, the team holidays, the partial holidays, the ceremony time, and we be taking a focus factor of uh, 90%. If uh, you want to talk uh, know about details on focus factor, visit the previous video where we talked about uh, understanding capacity planning and also visit agiledigest.com where you can actually browse through capacity planning and details how it is calculated. So the final capacity it is showing uh, based upon the focus, fa focus factor and all the factors uh, we have calculated it's 
coming to 46.50 or 50.10 for Tanushree or 53.70 for Dennis. Now the next step, we got the final capacity. We need to find out how we can fit in this capacity within Jira. So in Jira, <clears throat> there is no uh, default uh, mechanism to plan your capacity. So we'll be using a third party add-ons that's uh, called capacity planner from Organize. We'll look into that, how uh, that is working. So that have some inbuilt mechanism that add-ons that take care of your uh, these holidays or these uh, team holidays, these ceremony times in a different way. In the next slide, we'll talk about how we'll be calculating that. So assume this is your final capacity that you have calculated. And in Jira, this holiday, you can actually, there is an options within that add-ons that I'm talking about. You can include all these in a uh, area where it is called holidays. You can also take uh, um, calculations of all these vacations within Jira add-ons in one area of individual uh, team members to calculate the vacations. So here within vacations, you can see this all the circle marks. Those are four here will be actually marking it within Jira and keep it here as a full capacity. Now for uh, these ceremony times, we'll be using uh, another field within Jira that's called deduction. So everything over here, the cer ceremony time we're taking will be putting in Jira. Uh, within deduction area. So now let's see there is something called default capacity. What it will be if we actually don't calculate anything in our calculation, the default capacity will be only calculating the focus factor. So how it will be looks like everything will be here as the full capacity. Only we are taking the focus factor and by keeping the focus factor, we are getting the default capacity is 72 hours and for mark is 36 hours and we'll be actually entering these value into jira and let's see how does that capacity comes up and then we'll do some uh, creating task and assigning task and how that uh, capacity shows us okay let's jump into jira okay so here uh, we are in jira so this is uh, one board we have currently, let's assume this is the board you are working on. This is demo sprint 15. That is uh, our current board. And within that, we are working on one of uh, the sprint that is sprint 15. So sprint 15 is the name of the sprint that uh, currently we are doing capacity planning for. And the demo board is the name of the board that we are um, currently working. So this is your uh, sprint duration. It starts instead on 7th of June, ending on 12th of June, if you calculate over there. So here also it started on 7th of June and ending on 20th of June. Okay, so here we have that add-ons. If you uh, install that add-ons, you will be seeing it inside your menu bar and will be go to a capacity planning. So for this tutorial, I already have created one of the team uh, that's named Agile Digest. So here you need to select the team. You need to select the board. We'll select demo board and we'll select the sprint name that is sprint 15. Currently we are working. So this, this is demo sprint 15 and we'll say, okay, show me the capacity. So this is your uh, cap um, current team member. What we had in that uh, PowerPoint presentation we are showing this is the current team members and the default capacity we have so we can actually uh, change the default capacity uh, instead of eight we'll be doing it as per our uh, this powerpoint here we'll be seeing so how actually it will be working is if you see this default capacity will be coming up like okay in jira we have a default capacity that is this one a deductions of 12.33 that will be your this value and the vacations everyone has 88408 so we'll put in this value into jira and assume there is a team holiday of 12th of june so what we'll be doing in jira that in Jira will be coming and first will be updating the default capacity. So default capacity is 72 for everyone and 36 for Mark. So we'll be changing it. We'll be click on this edit. We'll be changing it to 72. 
we'll talk about these holidays later now this way i'll be adding the default capacity for everyone yes so <clears throat> over here you can see we have updated the default capacity for everyone and mark have only 36 everyone has 72 that 72 hours that's the default capacity for this particular sprint for this particular board any given point of time if you think that you want uh, some cross-functional teams involvement and wants to calculate their capacity you can simply add that team member and give the default capacity and add so it will be add up here now we'll be talk about uh, a team holiday so uh, if we want to say okay how much was the team holiday that was 12th of june and eight uh, sorry 12th of june it was a default eight hours so i will be doing apply and it will be coming to this column where you are seeing it's all eight hours off now we'll be talking about vacation deductions and vacation so everyone have a deduction of 12.33 and someone have in different vacations based upon whatever they have planned over here so we'll be taking that up and do our calculation and see how does that come so what we'll be doing is again we'll be clicking over here so this is one time activity so deduction is 12.33 hours vacation was eight hours and we clicked on save in the same fashion we'll update the entire capacity and we'll fill up our capacity planning over here so let's do do this quickly yes <clears throat> so we uh, already have updated all the vacations all the holidays and the deduction this was we actually calculated from our ceremony time and we can see the available capacity is 43.67 43.67 or 41.67 whatever it's calculated based upon the default capacity minus all these and this is already included our focus factor now if we see we uh, in our uh, sprint planning uh, sorry in our sprint board we had couple of uh, stories that have some task and uh, one of the task i just checked it's saying allocated of six hours current status allocation is everyone is under allocated and remaining hours we need to uh, see how many hours of work remaining for this person whatever we have allocated is six and whatever is remaining is again six because we have not logged our hours we have not burned down anything and this is saying how much we have spent so far and now what we'll be doing is we'll be adding few tasks for few of these team member and we'll come back here and see how does that go so it, instead of uh, changing this here i'll be changing the board in a new tab and we'll go to demo board okay in this print board uh, again we came back we saw uh, what was the time remaining we'll click on the stories and see how many tasks we have over here on the sub task if you click here you can see this is a sub task and this was assigned to alex and over here you can see okay alex has six hours this six hours is coming from this particular uh, task I can create one more task uh, over here and can say okay this is a sub task and I'm saying this is a development work and I say okay whatever the priority I don't care at this point of time I want to assign it to someone uh, let's say I'm assigning it to Jason and uh, original estimate I can leave it here but I am saying okay 10 hours of uh, remaining estimate at this point of time i say create so we added uh, 10 hours of work uh, for development work uh, and this is assigned to jason we'll be seeing uh, the capacity quickly and you see jason has got uh, something allocated of 0 0.17 and why it is 0 0.17 uh, because whatever we have entered as a estimation this is actually i have not mentioned uh, age so that's why it's calculating as minute so i need to mention this original estimate is let's say h i need to mention h for the hours so if i mention it like this now instead of minute it's become hours if i so show 
capacity it will be showing that 10 hours is uh, currently allocated and remaining is total uh, 10 hours out of total 43.67 of capacity so we'll be quickly create one more task uh, for let's assume mark and mark has total of 15.67 hours of available capacity we'll create the task uh, for more than 15 hours and let's see how does uh, that happen so for this story I will be creating one subtask and I'll be saying okay uh, testing for uh, XYZ whatever you can mention and now remaining estimate I'll be saying 16 hour okay and I need to mention it to mark create okay the task is now created it's assigned to mark and the remaining hours is 16 so i'll come back here and click over here so it is showing 15.67 and this is 16 so this is something we need to uh, worry about whenever you are doing a sprint planning creating small small task for everyone once this value is cross the available capacity that's an alarming so uh, this is actually this uh, tool is a third party tool there are few uh, uh, functionalities i will prefer if they can include one of them if they can include something uh, inline editing here and show something uh, highlighted if uh, the remaining is more than available capacity so again uh, we need to see another uh, ways of looking into it available capacity over here is a total for the sprint but if there can be an options where it can shows a calculate available capacity from today so in that way you can utilize this capacity planner on everyday basis so here uh, it's showing okay even if you burn down after three days or four days it's not uh, showing that value 43.67 it's still saying how come this is calculated 72 uh, if we can actually do a quick calculator here and see okay for this one we have 72 minus 12.33 minus 8 minus 8 is equal to 43.67 but the thing is we need to actually find out what is the day of today so for this particular sprint we have six days remaining even we have that default uh, capacity but as of today it's not 43.67 so this uh, particular uh, add-ons still have some improvement opportunities and once we can do that we'll be having a full-fledged uh, capacity planner that we can utilize not even before sprint planning within uh, our execution throughout the day we can actually look into it and find out what exactly the current state of uh, the team is if everyone is under allocated or everyone is over allocated here it is showing over allocated but this over allocation is based upon the total days remaining from the start of the sprint so as of now in jira that's the only options we have there are few other tools uh, or uh, plugins available those uh, for an example you can use uh, jira portfolio but that portfolio doesn't uh, have that option so you can do a sprint level sprint planning that is, and that is actually into your epic level or uh, more uh, uh, higher level uh, planning uh, there may be some other add-ons but i have not encountered it so far so this is uh, just an example to uh, let you know that you can do in jira the capacity planning as well in jira it's very flexible that there are so many plugins available we need to find out the best plugin as of now and you can do a capacity planning i just wanted to show you the concept of capacity planning and how you that gets effect within jira i hope uh, this was uh, helpful for you what exactly you are looking for if you have any suggestions or any comments you can uh, give the comments in the youtube video or go to agiledigest.com into capacity planning page and gives your feedback i will happy to uh, accommodate your new request or new demand or if there is any suggestions you have i can try to accommodate that thank you very much for watching keep watching our channels and give your feedback thank you very much once again bye bye